Hello and welcome to this tutorial in the A10. Today we're going to be looking at visual landings. So far you should have a rough idea of where everything is in the cockpit and be able to get airborne and navigate. Now it's time to learn how to get home after the mission. Visual landings are just that, a landing made visually, with your eyes on the tarmac using the HUD for your information. A visual landing should only be attempted when visibility is good and there are no clouds or fog obscuring your vision. We are currently flying pretty much parallel to our airbase runway in the opposite direction to the direction we will be landing. This is known as the downwind leg, as the wind, if there is any, should be blowing from behind us. You always take off and land into the wind. That's our airbase out there, just off to our right. I'm slowly beginning a descent whilst throttling back. The important thing to remember here is that things should be done slowly and given plenty of time to take effect. We don't want to be diving down at high speeds. We want to gradually bleed off the speed to about 170 knots as we descend. Don't rush or you'll have a messy landing. Once we are sufficiently past the runway, we'll make a turn to the right on what is known as the crosswind leg as the wind will be blowing across our plane. At this point, we'll be begin bleeding off speed even further to around 130 knots. And finally, we'll make a last turn onto what is known as the final leg of our landing, which is when we'll be putting the runway directly in front of us and controlling our descent to a smooth touchdown. I've selected a runway that lies on a north-south line to make it easier to see what's going on. Our downwind leg will be flown due north, our crosswind leg is due east and our final approach will be due south. When you're practicing your landings, make it easier for yourself and do the same. We'll make our turn once the runway has slipped past our wing, but first as we're going to be manoeuvring in the pattern, I'll turn the wingtip lights on with the control and L keys. There we go, and a quick check to confirm they're on. What a beautiful evening. OK, the runway has slipped past our wing sufficiently and our speed is down to 170 knots, so it's just about time to make a 30 degree bank turn to the right. Okay, let's do that now. The nose will dip as you do this, so compensate for that with a little bit of back pressure on the flight stick. Notice the shallow bank. You want to be banking no more than 30 degrees, flying around in the pattern, particularly at slow speeds. You'll notice that your aircraft is somewhat sluggish. We'll roll out due east, which is our crosswind leg. There we go. We're now on the crosswind leg. We want to start bleeding off speed again to get us to around 130 knots, so I've throttled back slightly.
As we pass 150 knots, I'll dial in 15 degrees of flaps by tapping the F key once, and this will give us greater lift at slower speeds, but will also cause some drag. I'll do that now. With the flaps extended, as I mentioned, it will cause drag and your speed will begin to uh, drop a little bit more rapidly. Which mine is doing, so I'll just dial in a bit of extra thrust here, I don't want to be going too slow. See the air base out there? Almost ready to make our final 30 degree banked turn to the right onto our final leg, which will put us on course for our landing. We'll turn when the runway is between the canopy rail and our wing. The more you practice these visual landings, the more you'll uh, get a better idea of when to make your final turn. about there. Okay, again a 30 degree bank. I'll lower the landing gear now with the G key and confirm three green lights. Our gear are down. Again, this will cause a little bit of drag, so just keep an eye on your speed. And I've dialed in full landing flaps of 30 degrees with the shift and F key. Again, this will give us greater lift at slow speeds. Okay, now we want to align ourselves. And I'm a little to the left of the runway, so I'll just drift over to the right as we descend. Okay, now things get a little bit more complicated. Take a look at the HUD. This is the heading book. It represents where your plane will end up if nothing changes. In flight, you can use the heading book to ensure you'll clear a building or a hilly terrain when flying at low altitudes. In a visual landing, however, we'll use it to set our plane down where we want it on the runway. It's very important at this point to mention that in a landing, we do not fly down to the runway, we sink down to it. Our nose remains level, and we use our throttle to increase or decrease our sink rate. We want to keep that heading bug on the black tyre marks on the end of the runway, where they are now. Keep the nose level and use small adjustments to the throttle to de decrease or increase your sink rate. At slow speeds, it can take a while for things to happen, so use small adjustments and wait for them to take effect. Do not start slamming the throttle around, or you'll be bouncing around all over the sky. Remember, keep the nose level and use small throttle inputs. Okay, we're coming down nicely. We want to be descending between 5 and 8 meters per second on the VSI. I'll be touching down with a descent rate of anything from 0 to 5 meters per second. When we cross the threshold, we'll throttle back to idle and pitch up slightly. 
Not too much or we'll stall, but just enough to settle the rear wheels on the tarmac first. Okay, throttling back to idle and pitching up slightly. Holding it there. And touchdown. Lower the nose wheel onto the tarmac and then stamp on the wheel brake with the W key. Let's bring this down to a nice safe taxiing speed. And there you have it. Safely down. And that concludes this tutorial on visual landings. The next tutorial will be on ILS approach landings, in poor weather or bad visibility. We'll use the cockpit instruments to land as opposed to using visual cues from the HUD and the runway outside the cockpit. If you'd like to join me on that tutorial, I will post a link in the description box below. Thank you very much, it's been my pleasure.